Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church's Easter Sunday, Sunday of the Resurrection celebration on YouTube, April 9th, 2023. I only have one announcement this week, and that is that next Sunday, there'll be only one service at 10 o'clock, the Sunday after Easter, one service, 10 o'clock, and no Sunday school. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for forgiveness from God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As I call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share within Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Then Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receive forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm for today is Psalm number 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. But the Lord has this, but by the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in your eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now we have special music from Mike and Katie Steet, Because He Lives. Empty 
can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he second reading from the letter to the Colossians, the third chapter. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a tragic scene. A roadside cross, bouquets of flowers, perhaps some candles, a stuffed animal, or a jersey from a local high school football team. Sometimes there's a hand-painted placard with a name and a date. You drive by and get a mere glance, but you know there was a moment on this highway when something horrific happened and a person or persons lost their lives. Unfortunately, highway deaths and roadside memorials, sometimes called the cansos from a Spanish word meaning to rest, have become so common that some states are seeking alternatives. Joyce Keeler knows the pain of losing a loved one in a tragic automobile accident. Over 30 years ago, her son lost his life on a rural road in Delaware. For Joyce, driving by the site of the accident is still too painful. She avoids it, even all these years later. 
Instead, Joyce goes to the Delaware High Memorial Garden at the Smyrna Rest Area near her home. Among the trees, shrubs, and flowering plants is a pathway lined with memorial bricks that bear the names of those who have lost their lives on the roads of Delaware. In the center of the garden is a pond with goldfish, frogs, water lilies, and a gurgling waterfall. Tucked amid the busyness of nearby highways US-13 and Delaware 1, it's a peaceful place to remember and reflect. To honor the memory of her son, Joyce sits quietly near the brick that bears his name. Patrick Bowers, whose 21-year-old son died in a crash in 2008, also frequents the Delaware Highway Memorial Garden. It's not morbid or gloomy, not like a feeling you get at a cemetery, he says. It's a garden, like someone would do in their backyard. Delaware is one of the several states providing alternatives to roadside memorials because traffic safety officers worry that they are a dangerous attraction to drivers and also put those who maintain them in harm's way. In most states, descansos are illegal, but officials rarely enforce those laws. Like in New Jersey, I don't think we have anything specific that people can use in place of them, and it's against the law to have them, but apparently it's not enforced. Several states have implemented sign programs that offer a safer option to mark the site of a crash. Others have adopted laws limiting the time memorials allowed to remain on the side of the road. Still others offer to plant memorial trees at the sites of fatal accidents. Joyce Keeler much prefers the garden over a roadside memorial. Things like that get old and the flowers fade, she says, but this will never go away. Long ago, a mother lost a son. It's not likely, however, that she ever went back to the place where he died. Not much chance she wanted to sit by a cross like some others might do today. The cross on this hill was the instrument of her son's most cruel and painful death. She'd been there to witness it. Where would she go to remember? Did she want to erect a memorial? Did she want some place she could visit and just think about her son? Did she want to erect a pillar of stones in his memory in his hometown, Nazareth, or Bethlehem, where he was born? Did she want to post a sign at the site of some of his most famous miracles? Did she want to turn the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus into a shrine or museum in his honor? Her people, after all, had a strong tradition of building memorials. The patriarch Jacob set up memorials to mark decisive events in his life, as did Joshua after crossing the Jordan. Surely the thought crossed her mind. How can I remember my son? How can we all remember him? Perhaps she'd heard from the disciple John that on the night before her son died, even he, her son, had talked about being remembered. They'd been eating and hanging out when suddenly Jesus took some bread, gave all the disciples a piece, said a brief prayer of thanks, and told them to take it and eat it. This is my body which is given for you, he said. Do this in remembrance of me. But this is speculation. We don't know if Mary ever went to the tomb where they took her son after he died. Catholic tradition, underscored by Pope John Paul II, says that Jesus appeared to his mother first, making it unnecessary for her to go to the tomb. But that aside, who could know the agony she endured from Friday to Sunday morning? Even the care she received from the beloved disciple John, her son's best friend, could not alleviate the sadness and despair. Then the news came. The tomb is empty. After the initial questions and confusion subsided, much of what she heard Jesus say must have come flooding back into her mind. She would never need to visit a cross or a tomb. She would never need to erect a pile of stones. She would never need to maintain a museum. She would never need to plant a garden. Her son, who was dead, was in fact alive. He's alive. While Mary, Joseph's, Jesus' mother, may not have felt like she needed to go to the tomb that first Easter morning, two other Marys did. The very same instinct that drives people to the site of a crash may have carried Mary Magdalene, a close disciple of Jesus, and another Mary, identified a few verses earlier as the mother of James and Joseph, to the tomb on that early morning. They came not with a handmade cross and flowers, but with oils and spices. They came not to set up a roadside memorial, but to care for the body of the one they followed, the one who loved and accepted them when no one else did. They came prepared to do the only thing they could think of to honor the memory of Jesus. It's a normal reaction. This need to take care of or to tidy up, to do something. Steve Lopez, for example, knows an instinct. He has attended a roadside memorial in Arizona where his wife, daughter, and granddaughter died in a 1999 traffic accident. He comes periodically to pull weeds and clear litter from that spot 
where his life changed forever. After every winter storm, Brad Tackett shovels snow from a roadside memorial in Queensbury, New York. That honors the memory of a high school classmate who died in a crash. Others come when the weather is better to mow and remove weeds. Like Mary and Mary, it's all they can think to do. They want to know. They want people to know they remember and care. But the Marys never get their task. Before they can get to Jesus' body, they're greeted by an angel who tells them no memorial is needed. Jesus, the one who was crucified, has been raised from the dead. He's no longer in the tomb. In their confusion, the Marys run to tell the disciples what they have seen and heard. Along the way, they are met by the resurrected Jesus. They want to hold on to him, to worship him, but Jesus instructs them to find the disciples and tell them to meet him in Galilee. The one they thought was in his final resting place is instead on the move. He's calling them to follow him. Our instinct to remember, uh, mark and remember upheaval, crisis, or life-changing events is a good one. As noted earlier, marking the places where significant life-altering events occur is an ancient practice. For example, after his dream of a staircase between heaven and earth, Jacob marked a spot. He took the stone he had used for a pillow that night, stood it on end, poured oil on it, an act of anointing, and named the place. He wanted to remember what had happened there. Mary and Mary went to that tomb of Jesus to mark the spot where their lives had changed. They wanted to remember and honor the one who had so significantly altered the trajectory of their lives. Family and friends erect and care for roadside memorials at crash sites to mark the spot where their lives changed in an instant. They seek to honor and remember those they have loved. On Easter Sunday, we too come to remember the moment when life changed forever. We come to remember that Jesus, the one who cares for us, who loves and accepts us even when it seems no one else does, has been raised from the dead. He is alive. Death has been defeated. Life wins. Thus, no memorials are needed. Except one, our lives. By following Jesus, by giving Jesus our very lives, we offer living memorials to Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. There are hints of this in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul wrote to believers in Rome who were following Jesus, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to resent your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the ancient disciples, following Jesus did not end at the cross. They followed Jesus even after the resurrection. In Galilee, their home place where he had first called them, where they journey with Jesus had begun, he would give them further instructions. This was their memorialization. They were to follow, to feed the flock, to baptize, to make disciples. They had work to do, and all of it would help them to remember and to honor. Jesus likewise calls us to follow him to the places we know, to follow him in work, at school, with our families, in conversation with our friends, and in ministry to our communities. The one who has shown us resurrected life calls us to share that new life with others. We're to tell others about what he has done for us and to offer them the love, grace, and healing we have received from him. To honor Jesus, to remember where our lives were changed forever, no memorial is needed. We celebrate Jesus instead with a, cha with a changed, resurrected life. Jesus is alive and calling us to follow him still today. Death has been defeated. Life wins. No memorial needed. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we have special music from Bob Kramer and Harry Ravel. He lives. Thank you. 
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, as we celebrate new life in the resurrection, make your church courageous in its witness and bold in its proclamation, so that those who live in the shadow of death may see the light of Christ. God of justice, grant local and national leaders wisdom to govern with humility and grace, ensuring the security and dignity of all people in their care. Faithful God, you call us to new life in the resurrection of your Son. Grant all the baptized grace to walk forth as your faithful people and be bold witnesses in the world. For all those affected by the shooting in Nashville, bring comfort and peace to those who have suffered the loss of loved ones. Calm the anger within anyone who would decide to bring violence upon others. Bring an end to the gun violence that plagues our country. For the people of Ukraine, may they find strength to endure the invasion. May they prevail against Russia's unwarranted aggression and return to peaceful times. For an end of the pandemic and return to normal times, be with those who are infected, strengthen those who are unvaccinated, and bring relief to all medical personnel as they strive to treat the sick. Give continued guidance to President Biden and his advisors during these difficult times. We continue to pray for the safety of troops that are deployed throughout the world, especially for those who are known to us, Andre Flamini, Jordan Wilson, and Lily Kramer. God of all consolation, you comforted Mary Magdalene at the tomb by making known to her the risen Christ. Comfort all who grieve and all who are ill, especially those who may not name in our hearts and out loud. God of healing power, we pray for anyone having trouble with their heart. Create in them a new heart and renew a right spirit within them. Through your indwelling Holy Spirit, flow through the valves and arteries, removing any blockage, anything that would hinder your healing touch. Heal any damage of the heart and any part of the body affected by the heart disease and grant your healing and wholeness. Allow the heart to be made whole in Jesus' name. Eternal source of peace, as you raise your son on the third day, so raise us on the last day to live in the glory of Christ with you and all the saints for whom we praise you today. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.